Hey everyone, Matt here from Native Instruments, and today we're gonna talk about mastering your music. What it is, why it's such an important part of the production process to get your track sounding professional, and how to do it. We're gonna be using Isotope's Ozone 10 standard, which is included with Complete 14. First, let's talk about what mastering is and why it's important. Mastering a song involves taking a mix and putting the final touches on it, enhancing the overall sound, and getting your music ready for distribution to places like streaming services or physical formats. This can involve aspects such as adjusting levels, applying stereo enhancements, and monitoring for clicks and pops. Basically, anything that can distract the listener from the music. The end goal is a polished, loud, and clean sound that's optimized for consistent playback across different formats and systems. Honestly, the easiest way to think about mastering is comparing it to a cake. Your production elements are all the ingredients. After baking, you have a nice layered cake, which is your mix, and the master is topping it off with the icing and decorations to give you that nice, clean, polished look. It's really easy to get a great sounding master with Isotope Ozone 10 especially with the built-in tools like the AI-powered Master Assistant. You can do things like match the tone of your favorite songs, make your track hit hard with Ozone's legendary limiter, and lots more. I made a pop synthwave track in Logic Pro X using sounds from Complete 14. The mix sounds great, so let's put Isotope's Ozone 10 on the output, use the Master Assistant, and get this track ready for distribution. First, let's play back this track. With Isotope's Ozone 10 standard open, let's click the Master Assistant, and then we'll select the loudest part of our track. You'll notice it instantly got louder and selected Rock as the target genre preset. This makes sense given the drums. These are different mastering styles based off top genres. Let's flip through a few targets and see how it changes the tone. I actually really like how EDM sounds as a bass line. Another cool thing you can do is upload your own reference track. I can hit the plus here and select any audio file from my computer. This is really useful if you have a song that sounds similar to yours and you want to match the overall tone. For this track, let's stick with the target EDM. The layout of the master assistant lets you manipulate different modules with just one slider. So for instance, this would affect the entire EQ module. Down here you have width, which affects the imager module. And the dynamics knob affects the maximizer. If you turn it up, it'll limit more. If you turn it down, it'll limit less. Another key setting is the optimize for. On streaming, it's gonna set everything to cap out at negative one dB, which is perfect for distribution, such as Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, and so on. <music> DJ Player is gonna lower the threshold so it's limiting more and change the ceiling to negative 0.1 decibel. <music> Since this track is set for distribution, we'll leave it on streaming. Let's see how the dynamics knob affects the track. Again, these simple sliders affect parameters within a module. So let's dive in a little bit deeper. Here in the equalizer module, you can see if I change the amount, it affects the curve drastically.
This is really convenient if you just want to push that EQ a little bit more overall. Let's solo this band. Since this track is bass guitar heavy, I can see why it's pushing the low end. It's also shelving the highs a bit to get rid of some of the shimmer. Overall, I'm happy with these adjustments and I just want to push the amount to about 70%. If you really want to learn about all the parameters within each module and detailed information on how to use them, check out the series Are You Listening on Isotope's YouTube channel. Now let's check out the imager. This is one of my favorite modules because audibly it makes one of the biggest differences. Here you can change the frequency crossover and these correlate to the sliders below. This way, if you want more low end in your first slider, you can change that. Let's solo the mids. With stereo imaging, a little goes a long way. The master assistant actually took some of the sides out of the low end, so let's see what that sounds like. One of the coolest new features in Ozone is the Recover Sides option. Previously, when you'd remove stereo width from a band, you'd actually lose the information on the sides and you'd only hear what's in the middle. With the new Recover Sides option, it actually takes that information on the sides and pushes it to the middle. For listening purposes, I'm going to extend this band so you hear a little bit more of the mid-range. You can really hear a big difference there. Let's solo just the sides. Pull the slider up to about negative 37 to keep it narrow and change the crossover frequency to about 180 hertz. This way it covers the bass guitar. Sounds great. Other than that, let's just widen the high end. Again, a little goes a long way. Now let's check out the dynamic EQ module. This is cool because it's an EQ and a compressor in one. What it's doing is finding frequencies that are harsh and compressing them based off the EQ bell. These very subtle changes make a huge difference in the overall tone of your song. I love how this sounds. I actually just want to add a dynamics module right after the EQ. What's great about adding new modules is if you don't know where to start, there's presets for individual modules. Let's click on Smooth Dynamics. This is a multiband compressor and limiter built into one. First thing I'm going to do is turn on Adaptive Release so I don't even have to think about the release time. Now let's start with the high end and adjust the thresholds. You can see how much it's compressing based off the colored meter at the top. The goal here is just to keep large transients tamed, but not over compress. Last thing is to check out the maximizer. This is the final module in the chain of mastering. The goal with this module is to make your track louder while maintaining dynamics and not squishing it too much. Since we're set to streaming, you can see the ceiling is set to negative one decibel and true peak is turned on so nothing clips after the export. Let's see how the threshold affects the sound. This part's very important because you want to find a nice balance between loud yet still dynamic and not distorting. One of the newest features is the Magnify Soft Clip. This allows you to boost loudness while maintaining high fidelity audio. This is another setting where a little goes a long way. Let's hear the difference. The 
best way to think about this is having saturation at different starting levels and then controlling the amount from there. Overall, I think this track sounds great, it's loud, it's dynamic, and it has everything we need. Let's hear a before and after using the gain match button. This allows us to hear a before and after of the master that's loudness matched. The only sonic differences we'll hear are the effects of our EQ, dynamics, imager, and the dynamic EQ on our master. Let's listen. You can really tell how the highs are untamed and all over the place when bypassed. Also notice how the low end comes forward and really completes the spectrum. Another big difference is the stereo image. While it's subtle, it's perfectly spread. Isotope's Ozone 10 standard. Check it out today at isotope.com or get it from Native Instruments as part of Complete 14. If you want to learn more about mastering, head over to Isotope's YouTube channel and check out the series, Are You Listening?